Today, we will be tier ranking all of the live action lightsaber duels from episodes one through nine. So welcome back to the Force with Friends podcast. My name is Will with the Padawan Pops YouTube channel. This is my friend and co-host, Kevin. And if you didn't know, we have a podcast and we like to talk Star Wars. Today, we're talking lightsaber duels. Probably the coolest thing in Star Wars, I would say. If you ask yeah. any one person about Star Wars, they're probably going to go, you know, they're going to know <laughs> lightsaber yeah. duels. So we thought, let's tier rank these lightsaber duels. So if you are new to tier ranking, it's not a full-blown one through however so many there are of these, 14 or, or something like that. Um, it's where you list them by a certain category. So S tier, the best lightsaber duel you've ever seen. There's nothing wrong with it. A, it's great, but it's not the best, and so forth. So B would be good, not great. C would be average. D would be the double thumbs down. You don't care for this lightsaber duel. Now, you'll notice on screen here, we do have a few that we're not ranking. So I just pulled up a tier maker. It's not like I wanted to take the time to make my own. So this had Finn fighting that one stormtrooper here. That's not a lightsaber duel. Um, <laughs> Obi-Wan versus Jango Fett, again, not a duel. Finn versus Phasma, those aren't even lightsabers. And then Luke and Kylo Ren and The Last Jedi, I can see where you would list that, but at the same time, they don't fight. Like, Kylo Ren swings around it's a like a maniac. Fight. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, he's fighting against a projector. So we decided <laughs> to take those out. So the rest of these, uh, we're going to start with Qui-Gon Jinn when he faces off against Darth Maul on Tatooine, and we're going to work all the way through Ray and Kylo Ren in The Rise of Skywalker on the Death Star. So that's the ones we're going to do. Um, some might say, oh, you don't have the Ben Solo fighting the Knights of Ren. It wasn't on here, and I don't think I would have considered it anyways, because again, he's just kind of slaughtering the Knights of Ren there. It's not really a duel. So this is where we're going to go. Kevin, before we get started in any of these, did you have a hard time maybe thinking through this or was this pretty easy for you? Uh, I, I don't think it was very hard, but it, you, you and I were talking today. I, it came down to like, you can't really just look at the fight and just be like, mm. Oh, th we're just going to look at the choreography, right? Just, just the action side of it, because yeah. there's so much more behind these scenes in these movies, whether it's the emotional impact or where, like where you saw the movie, how old you were, where you saw it in the theater or whatever. Like there's a lot of the experience um, in watching these movies. And so I, I, I realized I couldn't really separate like yeah. whether it was nostalgia or whether it was my love for the music during the scene, like all these components <laughs> that make up these duels, like you can't just eliminate them and just look at the fight. And so I imagine yeah. this is probably a very, a very varying uh, thing. You know, I think there's probably some top ones everybody has, but then beyond that, I feel like yeah. it's got to just be kind of, different for everybody so it was interesting kind of going through that and realizing there's a there's a lot that goes into what these what makes these scenes my favorite or not my favorite yeah so. that that's the kind of the along the same lines like you start to get into <laughs> some me. some gray areas with with all of these right so some of them everyone knows their favorite pretty much i've posted a few things on youtube and i'll be like choose your duel whatever and I mean, some of these have hundreds of comments between YouTube and Instagram, and I would say 99% of them go down to Duel of the Fates in Episode 1 and yeah. Battle of the Heroes in Episode 3. Right. I, I would almost bet the house that if you ask <laughs> any Star Wars fan that, that is a fan of all Star Wars what your favorite is, it would be one of those two. That would be like the safest bet you could make. So obviously, like, right. we're going to have yeah. those high up. But you get into some of these other ones... And the action isn't incredible in some of them, mm -hmm. but the story is. So like you said, you can't separate yeah. the two. So 
when we're ranking these, we're not just saying like, oh, this is the most exciting duel ever. Sometimes it is that, but sometimes it's a mixture of the action plus the story. So do keep that in right. mind, but don't be afraid to argue with us about it either. So drop it in the comments if you think our, our rankings are pooey or whatever. Let us know. <laughs> Let us know how you would rank these. We are interested. This isn't just us yeah. sharing stuff. We want to hear what you have to say too. So let's and, get and we started. Don't even know oh. where, we don't even know where we're ranking them. So I, have, that is I correct. have no clue where you're about to put some of these things as well. So Yeah. So let's start with Qui-Gon and Darth Maul. So right. Qui-Gon and Darth Maul, I think this one probably lasts like 45 seconds on screen. Yeah. Um, but if you think about it, as far as lightsaber duels go, it's the first lightsaber duel that was new that any fan saw in like 20 whatever, or 17 years, something like that. Yeah. So 16 years, that's the first one you saw. So if you were kind of like you were, um, that's true. you saw yeah. this in theaters, it was probably pretty cool to see it. So where would you put this one? I'm interested to hear. I, I, I put it in the, the B level. Okay. Um, cause again, it, it's, you know, there's not much to it. It's super brief, but at the same time, it's, it's a cool, really quick intro to Darth Maul. Yeah. Um, it's high stakes, right? They're trying to escape. You get the Qui-Gon jump onto the ship as they're flying away. So it's mm -hmm. a pretty cool moment, but it, I mean, it's hard to rank it as like a really high duel when it lasts, you know, I feel like I, that's as high as I yeah. can put it when it lasts for 30 seconds, but it's, yeah. it is cool. And it's, it's a really neat kind of intro to the new lightsaber kind of dueling that we see throughout the prequels. Right. I have no issues with it. Um, I don't, yeah. I don't love it or anything crazy like that, but it, it's good. So I think I was between B and C for it. Just average okay. to good. I do have a question. So you saw one in theaters. Yeah. I don't remember the trailers or anything. Did you know that Darth Maul's lightsaber was going to be dual bladed, like between the toys and the the trailer and everything? Or like, did you just think it was a strange hilt and it would just be one blade? Oh, I feel like that did kind of get revealed before okay. the movie. Um, Got it. I, I want to say that you go into it knowing that, that it was going to pop up at some point. Gotcha. Yeah, I was but that may at also the time. depend on how much you were paying yeah. attention to outside stuff. The other okay? stuff. So I, don't, yeah. I don't know. So I got the toys like the Christmas after, right? So yeah. and like the birthday and Christmas after. So I had the Darth Maul double bladed toy. I had the action figure that broke apart and everything, but this was all after the fact. So I wasn't sure right. how that timetable actually went. So yeah, I'm fine with that duel. Qui-Gon's cool. Um Duel of the Fates. For me, this is a no-brainer. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> it's it's probably realistically for me, it's the best duel, but I can't not say Battle of the Heroes just from the experience. So sure. for this one, like choreography, the scene, I mean dual bladed saber, Ray Park, it probably really is the best duel in all of Star Wars. It's it's always been my favorite. Um, you know, that was that was the giant spectacle of the movie, right? When it had been so long and I'm sitting in that theater. I think I was like maybe 13. Yeah. And you see this the the music swelling and you see on this big screen this this Sith dude and these two Jedi going against each other. Mm -hmm. It was so cool cuz I mean it, it it man it really paints Maul as like this really ferocious warrior, right? That he's holding off investing these two veteran jedi right and so yeah. um man it's such a cool scene all of it comes together so well it's it's high stakes right like it's mm -hmm. um one of the things i love about it is it's there's a lot of stuff going on throughout that moment moment of the movie between the trying to take the palace and the yeah. space battle with the control ship but like you're always wanting to come back to this this is like you're waiting to come back to maul and qui-gon and obi-wan fighting through the palace so it man it's i think it's always going to be my favorite um it would take something serious to to upend it for me so it's definitely top yeah. tier and definitely my favorite yeah i'm with you there also i didn't realize until i read the plagueis novel which very recently i've been a star wars yeah. fan for like almost 30 years and i read the plagueis novel a couple months ago and 
And that was a uh, plasma refinery. That's what they were fighting in. I was I I'd never realized what it actually was. Like, why are they fighting in this monstrosity of a, a huge building? And there's all yeah. this stuff. For whatever reason, I never put it together that that's what that was. I thought that was really yeah, cool. Was, and that's how Naboo made all of its money was plasma. I was about to say, it must be a major industry in Naboo. So. It, that is the industry. All <laughs> right. So we move from here to episode two. And I will say for episode two, I don't think the Obi-Wan versus An- or Obi-Wan and Anakin versus Dooku duel. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's the highlight of episode two. I think the highlight similar to the last Jedi, the highlight's not the Luke and Kylo Ren one. The highlight is yeah. when they're fighting all the droids. Like in the last Jedi, it's when they're fighting the guard in yeah. episode two. It's like all those Jedi in the arena. That's kind of what you get sucked into. Yeah. The lightsaber duel is almost like something that they had to throw in at the end just to be like, Oh yeah, we did have a lightsaber duel <laughs> in this movie. So to me, it's probably a between a B and a C because it it's slow paced. I mean, it's it's not. A, I mean, Obi Wan makes it maybe a minute with Dooku, yeah. and then Anakin even less. And I'm sure some of it may have to do with with Christopher Lee being like Methuselah yeah. at the time of filming, <laughs> but like, uh, it, it's just not that exciting to me. It's harsh. Yeah. I- <laughs> And it, it is one of the reasons I don't like it. And is, I mean, Obi Wan does get knocked out pretty quick, and and that's a little disappointing because he, that kind of happens in both the battles with Dooku. Yeah, he doesn't um, even last. <laughs> he immediately gets bested by du- like, come on, like Kenobi's a little better than this. Um, yeah. But then it, I feel like it really builds up to something really epic, right? Like Anakin grabs the other lightsaber. He's got two of them, but he two pretty them, quickly yeah. just loses his arm and gets gets forced pushed into a wall and so um i felt like it was it was something in that movie you're like really hyped and waiting for and it didn't it just didn't quite make it over that hump like it kind of built up a little bit and then just kind of settled pretty quickly so that's not a part of the movie where i'm always like oh yeah here comes this lightsaber battle um but i don't know It, it something about it just doesn't do it for me it, it does. I think deliver. I had it. I think I had it as C. Yeah, it it does not deliver at all. Like it's brief. You just cool, had the yeah, but but then because you, you also get that weird close up of Anakin and Dooku where you can't even really see the lightsaber. That's what I was about colors. to say. Like it's half like, of the right. battle is An- Hayden's just looking at a screen doing yeah. this, and then it goes back to Dooku doing the same, and then before you know it, he sticks his yeah. arm out for Dooku to cut it off. Like, yeah. come on now, which. Which it's cool imagery for a second, but when that's like a large segment of that battle is 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 the colors in the face. Not much else happens outside of that, right? And before everybody puts in the hate mail, I know they had <laughs> just survived an execution and fought a million droids and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Get that, but I mean, it's fake, so make it cool. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's fake, make it let cool. It, let them look past that. Yeah. I mean, come on now. So, uh, but I will say, when Yoda shows up, it's a different story. So yeah. you got all this going on, and he walks in with that little cane, and then <laughs> he's they're kind of he's kind of smack talking Dooku, right? And yeah. and then oh, totally. he he takes the cloak off and pulls the saber out to the side and. We've never seen Yoda fight with a lightsaber before. So, oddly enough, Anakin and Obi-Wan versus Dooku is a dud. But then you've got CGI Yoda versus Dooku. Yoda's jumping all over the place. I think that's a pretty good duel. It was one of those things that was really surprising once you once you saw it the first time because you, you kind of see Yoda pull out his lightsaber and you're like oh this is this is cool what's going to happen like you don't know what to expect right yeah um and so then he just hits that hyper mode and starts flipping and somersaulting and bouncing off of everything yeah. <laughs> uh you're like what is what is happening right now <laughs> i remember having that sense of like what what is going on like uh-huh. um so it was it was it was surprising. Like, I don't, I don't know that that's what I was expecting to watch Yoda fight. And it, it is, it is pretty cool. I, I liked it. So I, I put it as a B right where you're putting it. Yeah. That's, that's where it landed for me. The only thing like, 
if we're cutting people's limbs off here, I mean, I don't, I don't know what they had planned for the Clone Wars at this point. I feel like probably not a whole lot, given that it was like the real cartoon one at first. But I thought Yoda might have been able to get a good shot in on Dooku. But they had it to where Dooku, being a yeah. Sith, he like decides Pulls to crush Anakin. Yeah. yeah, which that's very Sith-like. You know, he's beat, so he's got to do something to get them out. But... Yeah, you I know. still think they did a good job of showing that Dooku was outmatched, right? Like, yes. Yoda was clearly the superior in that. That's what keeps so. it between an A and a B for me. If it had went, yeah. like, maybe another minute or so, a little bit higher stakes. But it's still yeah. good. Now, yeah. as much as I don't like the ending to Episode 2 with, with Anakin and Obi-Wan versus Dooku... I love when they open Revenge of the Sith with that duel. Um, so yep, one big too. difference, I believe. I know for a fact in episode three, they definitely had like a CGI face stunt double mm -hmm. on Count Dooku. So I don't know if that yeah, plays... Yeah, a different guy doing the stunts and the combat. Yeah. And also, I mean, Hayden <laughs> Christensen me. had three more years, two more years of training and and doing all that. I mean, he's really good in episode three with, with a lightsaber. So, oh, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, you see him, when it turns into just him and Dooku, and he's doing that move, he tries it against Obi-Wan at the end of the movie as well. He yeah. cuts off both of Dooku's hands, and then he's got both lightsaber blades there. And that was not to finish a movie. That was within the first 15 minutes up, right. of a movie. I remember being like a 12 year old in theaters for that thinking, wow, I mean, this is the start <laughs> of a here? movie. <laughs> yeah. So for me, yeah. that's it's between a B and an A probably. It's probably a B because, I mean, it's not a heavy duel. But it's pretty good. I don't. What do you think? You can be the deciding factor I, on that. I actually put it at an A. Um, okay. Because, especially looking back on it now, I, I love seeing this uh, because you get a comparison of Anakin Dooku before the Clone Wars and Anakin after he's been fighting for several, for, for all these many battles in the Clone Wars. Right? And they make so, reference to it too. Yeah. And so I like that you get to see an Anakin who has clearly grown and is clearly more uh, confident and skilled in what he's doing mm -hmm. and really pushes Dooku and, and beats him without too much trouble. Um, mm -hmm. It's another situation where Obi-Wan gets knocked out pretty quickly and he just kind of takes over. Um, and really, I mean, obviously it doesn't end very much in the Jedi way, but um, you know, he does it. It's the storytelling. Very calm, very collected, right? Like as a Jedi, just taking out his, his opponent. So yeah. I love that aspect of it where we see Anakin as, as a veteran now in this, yeah. in this war. Um, so I, I like it. I think I, I think the choreography is much, much better in it. Um, there's some really cool sequences in that fight. I agree. I, I had it in May. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy watching that part of the movie. And it kind of gets you to the foreshadowing where he's got the red and the blue blade yeah. both at the same time and, and Palpatine's yeah. already manipulating. It's It's got yeah. some stuff to it. So yeah, if I was giving it a B and a half and you were giving it an A, we will round it up. So That'll work. A it is. <laughs> Man, the I'm next sorry for one... all the coughing. Oh, you're the, fine. Uh, I'm. I've the yellow got, cloud I've got of it has arrived, and so let me know when you're about bad. to cough, and I can mute you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little button up here. I'll try to hit it next time. So we have Grievous and Obi Wan. For me personally, it's a little disappointing because. Yeah. <laughs> In the years up to this, so I was a Cartoon Network kid. So in the, like the year kind of going up to it, you get Grievous in the Clone Wars, right? Like you see him, yeah, uh, killing oh, he's the a pri primary Shaggy. Yeah, you, you know that one where like the Shaggy Jedi. He's he's essentially just like Shaggy from Scooby Doo, and Dooku like fights him and he like lands on him and everything, and he's so menacing. And you know he's going to have all these lightsabers. At the beginning of the movie, he's showing off all the lightsabers he has. And then it like turns into more of a chase than anything. And I get it because yeah. that's his character just constantly runs away. That's kind of how they did it. But 
I thought it could have been a lot cooler. Like it starts off real promising where he's spinning the sabers and Obi-Wan, you know, blocks it. It just doesn't deliver for me. They're kind of like Obi-Wan and Anakin versus Dooku the first time. Yeah. No, I, man, I put it down at a D just because. Oh, wow. Well, it was so disappointing because I feel like you don't get a good Obi-Wan duel with anybody since he finishes off Maul, right? Like, That's he gets true. knocked out of both Dooku fights, right? He mm-hmm. fights enemies that aren't aren't lightsaber armed, but like, this is an opportunity that I felt like they had really built up a big duel here, and nothing happens, right? Yeah. Grievous spins his lightsabers around, Obi-Wan pretty quickly chops off two of them, and then it turns into a chase, yeah. like you said. So, man, that... I had to put it low just because of how much of a missed opportunity it was. Because that could have been a really cool, more extended sequence that, that would have done Kenobi some justice. Because, I mean, he finishes off, obviously, a big fight at the end of the movie. But yeah. other than that, this was his opportunity to have, have a duel, and it just kind of get it, it doesn't happen. So I, and he really... shoots him. He doesn't even... Yeah, that's... He doesn't yeah. say where he shoots him. <laughs> yeah. How uncivilized. Uh... How uncivilized. So yeah, I man, it was a disappointment to me. I, I have to put it at the bottom because anytime it comes up, it it just makes me a little... I mean, after the hello there, right? Which we all love. <laughs> yeah, that After is that, there. I'm just like, well, now it's just going to become a chase. Like, there's no great value. Yeah. So, and I don't know. I will say too, um, when I was... I made a, a little real short thing where it was choose your obi-wan battle and i was going through all those i forgot this one even happened i didn't even put it in there and so i think that kind of it's not it's not really a battle right like it's It's a chase that involves lightsabers yeah yeah well that's disappointing (laughs) but from here on out things go pretty well for episode three so (laughs) uh order 66 happens well it doesn't quite happen yet uh windu confronts palpatine Mm -hmm. And that duel is almost entirely stunt doubles. And they throw in Samuel L. Jackson yeah. and Ian McDiarmid. Uh, I think that's his name, right? The Emperor? Yeah. Um, yeah the Emperor. They throw him in kind of here and there for it. But Samuel L. Jackson's kind of old at this point as well. You just don't realize it. So I think it's pretty good. It's the only time you get to see his pretty unique saber dueling style against yeah. another person with a lightsaber like you see how he fights in episode two kind of the dominant style but here you actually see it and he beats dooku he does pretty uh, cool yeah. or not dooku uh, Palpatine. Sidious. so yeah. sidious yeah so he beats sidious and we get to see sidious duel as well so we get his style in there too but i really i don't like mace windu but i do like seeing <laughs> this duel yeah. i'm i'm probably I'm leaning towards a B, but do you have it lower? No, I'm good with that. It's because it is a it's a cool sequence. You get to see Sidious kind of come out the gate and just pretty yeah. quickly oh, you know, yeah. I mean, annihilate some guys who clearly underestimated him, right? I don't think they were expecting what they got <laughs> yeah. from the And he, he the does scream too, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. His little spinning death dive that he does. Twirl. Um and yeah, and then you get to see Mace fight. I, I wish it was a longer sequence. That's one thing I wish we got is more more Mace Windu fighting mm-hmm. style. But but yeah, he bests him right. It's it's a cool fight. So I I had it in a B. It's enjoyable. It's interesting. Yeah. Um. And that's the first time you get to see Sidious kind of go at people. I mean, really, the only time actually. I mean, he fights Yoda later, but um, that's a good one. Spoiler yeah. alert! I like that one a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that's actually what we have next this if we're the, going in timeline. I guess this is really the only movie we see Palpatine fight. He isn't fighting any It movies. is. Yep. So, also, if you haven't seen the behind the scenes for the the Mace Windu versus Palpatine, it's pretty cool too because uh, Samuel L. Jackson's a funny guy anyway. So, yeah. like, just and he's he's almost like a kid getting to do all this. He loved it. So, you should definitely check that out if you have not. But next is Yoda versus Palpatine. So I think this is so good. It's an A for me. Yoda walks in and like he throws the guard up against the thing. He's again trash talking before a lightsaber duel, which is just kind of strange that Yoda does that. He's trash talking Anakin and he's trash talking Palpatine before he starts fighting. So, I mean, he'll dish it. 
And one of the coolest things of the prequels anyways is when they're in the, is it the Senate chamber? Would that be the right word for it? So the fact that they, I mean, episode one, when they're in it, it's so cool. Uh, Padme gives a speech and stuff. And I guess uh, Sidious does as well in episode two. But when they have a lightsaber duel in it and they're throwing the things, I mean, it was pretty awesome to see. And it's going on at the same time as Battle of the Heroes with with Anakin and Obi-Wan. So incredible sequence for me though it's it's an a instead of an s uh no i had it the same and i don't i don't know if it's a part of me wonders if it's because it is happening at the same time as the battle of yeah. the heroes because i feel like part of you is always kind of like are we going back here are we going Get back, back to over Anakin, Anakin, right <laughs> so but no it's a super cool scene right like they kind of it kind of evolves from lightsaber battle to just this battle of the force where they're just hurling objects at each other mm-hmm. um and it's right. It's fitting, right? George Lucas loves his yeah. uh, blatant imagery, right? Fighting he over does. Kind of the control of the government. So, um, no, I, I think it's a really fun scene. I, it's fun to see Yoda back in action again and against Sidious this time. So, um, and then the it's it's got a depressing end, right? You kind of see Yoda defeated and really yeah. kind of forlorn, right? He realizes he didn't accomplish. Um, what he wanted to so it's I, I enjoy it it's an A for me it's a good scene the, the only thing that keeps it from an S and I know there was no way for them to do this with how the story was pegged in but there's no finality to it like yeah. Yoda has to retreat and so for me when there's not that satisfying ending to it that does kind of always make me keep it from bumping it up one tier so That's but I, they they could not do that in this right. there was no way around it so yeah. it's good though uh this one i think it's gonna be pretty easy that's an s tier battle of the heroes it's as good as it gets for me so yeah again it's gonna be between duel of the fates and battle of the heroes for most fans i think what sets it apart for you and i both between choosing between these two is you saw episode one in theater yeah. And it was like an incredible experience. I did not. I I started from two forward. So I got to see this one in theater. And you watch your childhood hero of Anakin Skywalker. You know it's coming the whole way. I I knew from the minute, you know, starting episode one when I was six years old and finally watched it. Knew what was going to happen. But six years later, actually seeing it on screen happen. Yeah. It was incredible. I, I could not believe what I was watching with the lava and, and there's no reason he should have lost either. I mean, he's the, he's incredible yeah. as a, as a duelist, but Obi-Wan's defensive style and groundedness and, and his and wisdom cockiness, right? win him that battle. The dark side got in the way. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I fully admit that my nostalgia is what puts the Phantom Menace duel the face yeah. of this because i mean the choreography is just turned up like <clears throat> 10 times i mean yeah i mean it's it's cool I, watching the behind the scenes stuff of them training for this fight it's just so intense i mean they are yeah. going at it um so the whole scene is just fantastic like it never lets up um right. super intense and then of course you add to the awesome choreography and just the intense performance of it the emotional impact of it, right? Of watching Anakin fall. Yep. Um, the the music behind it. I mean, it oh, is. Yeah. Uh, it it's so incredibly well done. Um, I mean, I don't think there's anything else you could put in there to make to make that sequence better. Um, no. So. And George Lucas said too, like when he was talking to the set designers and he's describing Mustafar, he's like, "I want it to look like hell." And so that was their that was their. Uh, <laughs> They worked <laughs> a prompt for it. And it good. is so good though. Like they go from they start like on the landing pad, they get into mm-hmm. that building, they get onto that big spire thing, they're fighting on the yeah, lava. Really I mean, it's like just, a descent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just keeps going and going. And I, I for me putting it here, it's nostalgia for why I put it over Duel of the Fates. I think Duel of the Fates has more practical scenes in it. Like it's not as CGI heavy. And so this is a very CGI heavy duel, but one way or the other, those two were hands down S tier one and two yep. in my book, probably one uh, A and one B. Yeah. Um, transitioning into the original trilogy, though, <laughs> these lightsaber duels 
are a lot more of a storytelling aspect of things because yeah. in the seventies and eighties, things were different. So <laughs> this is going to yeah. be a, a different type of jewel. So I will be the first to say Obi-Wan versus Vader and a new hope is pretty boring. It's not an yeah. excellent duel. Now, story wise, it's very weighty. Yeah. It's the first lightsaber could... duel we ever see. Yeah. Um, it's a necessary I, I, thing. I feel like you could separate it into it's a great scene and not a good duel, right? That's like, fair. It's in terms of what Obi Wan's doing and how it resolves. It's a great scene, right? Yep. The dual part of it is lackluster, to say the least. <laughs> is it fair to put it in a D, though? <laughs> oh, I, I did. I did. Look, I'm just being honest, okay. right? Again, yeah. it doesn't. My critique has nothing to do with the actors, the story, the yeah. scene, um, because it's always going to be one of those iconic scenes in Star Wars, right? Yeah. The Obi-Wan holding up his lightsaber in resignation and, and yeah. taking the killing blow. Um, I mean, that's that's iconic for people who have seen the movie and, and love mm -hmm. it. And so it doesn't take away from that. It's just. I, I don't have any desire to watch them just kind of poke their lightsabers at each other, you know? So, and it's the first duel in duel. human history that we saw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mankind had um, not seen a lightsaber duel until this point. <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't think that's how Lucas would have envisioned the scene had he maybe had some younger people who, because like, cause we see it change in the next movie, right? So it's not, you know, it's just kind of the nature of, of, where it's at and this, this is the first movie and they're just trying to create this story and so yeah but yeah as a duel not very good honestly it's pretty surprising that b before he sold it to disney he didn't like go in and change it because he did that with other <laughs> things like he loved just, doing that <laughs> just have just have a uh, cg alec guinness just like spinning around <laughs> pulls out a he second so would have done that too <laughs> He had to have uh, somebody in the back of his head, like with, oh, within man. his group, saying, George, it's a bad idea. Don't do that. You can't do that. No. That's hilarious. Oh, man. Uh, but I will say, it once you throw in a 20-something-year-old in a lightsaber duel, it gets a lot no. better. So you get to Empire Strikes Back. Could be the most iconic. I mean, as far as scenes go, it is the most iconic Star Wars scene. Yeah. As far For as sure. duels go, it's up there. I mean, you go through different layers. Uh, you get to see a lot more action with it. There is a lot of finality to it. Like, it's it's weighty. Uh, for me, it's an A-tier duel. Mm -hmm. It's not S, but I, it's an A. I, I actually had a hard time back and forth between this one, between S and A. I, I did settle it at an A. But, it, I mean, it's okay. a great battle. I love that it moves through these different parts of Cloud City, right? Through the Carbonite chambers. And mm -hmm. um, I love the way it progresses, right? So Luke shows that he's fairly formidable, right? Like he's kind of holding his own against Vader. And then you have this thing where Vader's just like, you know what? You might be able to best me in this combat thing, but you don't know anything about the Force. And then so then he just starts yeah. hurling things at him. Luke yes. becomes essentially the turning helpless. point. Yeah. And so I love the way that this this progresses because it's it's essentially what, Yoda warned about right like mm -hmm. you're not ready to go up against Vader like you might be able to hold a lightsaber and fight pretty well but that's not what these fights are anymore right it's not just yeah. you and a lightsaber and Vader and so I love that we see really that discrepancy between Vader's knowledge of the force and Luke who's really just kind of dipped his toe in the pool um because it yeah. turns really quick and then we get to the, of course the iconic scene of the hand cut off so yeah um, Honestly, the only reason I put it at an A is because I can't remember, and this is just me being weird, honestly, but I can't remember the music during that scene. And I, I feel like for all the subtle. things that I've put at S, like the music driving the the cinema, the, the choreography and the battle is like a huge part of it. So I know that's just a weird thing probably for me, but um, again, that's why these things are, are, I guess, catered to the whatever your experience was with it. Now, I want to say when it starts, I could be completely wrong. I'll have to go rewatch it. But when it starts, there's not too much to it, right? They kind of build up to this crescendo being both yeah. of them igniting their sabers, right? So it's, I think, I want to say there's not much going quiet. on there. But by yeah. the time, like when he starts doing that and holding a saber and throwing the stuff at him, 
isn't it doing a form of the Imperial suite at some point there? Like, I want to say it may be doing that. Maybe not. It might be. I'm not sure. But I'll have to go back. I will say when when they end up in that little hallway going between being inside and then out on that little uh, yeah. awning balcony, whatever, that is terrifying when Vader pops out out of nowhere. <laughs> like I can yeah. only imagine being in theaters when that happened. I would have jumped. Like it is an absolutely terrifying thing. Cause I guess he just quit breathing for a few minutes. So Luke couldn't hear him. <laughs> and then he jumps he just out his breath. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, that's, he breathes, he's great. a loud breather. <laughs> the idea that Vader is aware enough of his breathing to hold his breath, to sneak up on people is a hilarious. Yeah. Thought. Um, and that's no, that's yeah. He does. And then they do a really good job of like signaling the finality of this fight because you got Luke backing up into this dead end. Like you, you kind of know mm. immediately at that point that this is over. Like this battle yeah. is done. Um, yeah. So I like the way that 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 they move towards that. Yeah. Now I'm I'm still kind of torn between it. I settled at an A because I don't feel really strongly about the S, but I do love this scene. So I think story wise, it's an S. I. So as far as S and A goes, I guess I compare it against the two that I have in an A. That's fair. And it's it's a step below. But story gotcha. wise, it's story wise, it's probably a step above Duel of the Fates. Yeah. Same level as Battle of the Heroes. Return of the Jedi's duel. I really like it. It's actually. It's closer to a prequel duel than Empire Strikes Back is. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, they're, Vader throws his saber, right? He does that at one yeah. point. He, do, he does yeah. a saber throw. Luke is really shows himself as, as a Jedi Knight at this point. He kind of dips into the dark side. So there at the end, I mean, he's just going yeah. after Vader. It's a good duel. I, I would say it's an A as well. Yeah, I I, I put it in A. Um, I thought about putting it in an S because uh -huh. I don't know. It might be an S for me, but I'll I'll settle it an A with you. Okay. Uh, simply because, man, I I love that scene. One, like just the combat's a lot better, right? Like the choreography right. of it, they really settled on something that worked for what they were trying to do. It's a lot faster paced, it's a lot more intense. Yeah. Um so I mean Luke and Vader really have a pretty good spar. Um, mm. but man, when, when Luke starts to lose it, uh, there's a track that's, it's called the dark side beckons that plays in that sequence. And it's oh, just kind I of the listen. strings and this kind of this low humming singing uh -huh. that kind of rises and falls, falls. And it, it just sounds so like almost remorseful. Like you're, you're watching this, this good thing turn sour. And so for yeah. me, just that, that soundtrack under, it's not loud. It's not like bombastic, like duel of the fates or battle of heroes. It's subtle, but I feel like it just so well fits what we're watching and kind of, we're all wait, like, just like, don't do it. Right. Like don't, don't mm. give into the dark side. <laughs> um, so for me, just with the way that soundtrack comes in there and plays with, with that sequence, like, I love that every time. And every time I watch it, it, it just, it's so good. Um, but again, that's a very specific thing. So I think in general, I'd, yeah. I'd put it down as an A, but um, sometimes I'll watch it. It's definitely an S. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, the story aspect to it is pretty good because it's the opposite of Empire Strikes Back. So uh, you, Luke yeah. obviously doesn't lose his hand in, in six. Yeah. It's Vader that does. But yeah. Vader is like delivering this, this blow to Luke emotionally saying, I'm your father, join me. And Luke goes and flips the script in six. He throws his saber down. And in, and by yeah. doing that, Vader ultimately joins Luke. Like Luke yeah. takes the place uh, and he's everything that, that Anakin should have been. And he's everything that a Jedi is. And so you see Vader's attempt failing in five and, and Luke by th stopping the fight, ends up pulling Vader back over. So it's it's really good imagery there too. Agreed. Looking at the sequel trilogy, I'll be the first to say the lightsaber duels are pretty. They yep. don't always carry the greatest of stories and the choreography is not as good as the prequels. So yep. 
just kind of preface in it going into there, they've changed the lightsabers at this point. So they're using like the lightsabers essentially that collectors have up on their shelves, yeah. like dueling sabers. And and I understand the practicality of it and, and in theaters or when you're filming, making it work that way. But I just think the way they had it figured out in the prequels, I think that's what a lot of us were expecting when we came into it. And it's, it's really completely different style as far as choreography goes. So these may be ranked yeah. a little bit lower, some of them. But yeah. let's start with, in the forest, Finn versus Kylo Ren. So that's that's where we start as far as lightsaber duels in 7 goes. Finn versus Kylo Ren, it's pretty short. Mm -hmm. It's a force user versus not a force user. Imagery wise, it looks great. Like that whole yeah. forest scene, they really make the reds and the blues pop. So I do like that. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't, I don't hate that scene. Um, I can forgive that Kylo Ren has a hard time battling a former stormtrooper since he just took a bowcaster bow shot in the gut, but um, yeah. <laughs> which Give sent everybody else flying about fifty feet when they got shot with it. So that I'll, is I'll, true. I'll yeah. Let that slide. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I don't mind this fight. I mean, it's it's very much a lead in to what's going to happen next, right? Like it's not it's not the yeah. the star moment of this of this battle. Um, it really is just kind of a lead in to Ray. And so I put it at a C. I don't hate it. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't do anything in particular for me. To your C point, was, I think Yeah. I just you know, they went with visual over practicality, mm -hmm. right? They wanted the lightsabers that that shed light, right? And so Obviously, you have to shift yeah. in terms of how you choreograph and how hard people are going to hit when they're actually holding things that emit light versus yeah. those metal rods. And so you can see it, right? It's a lot more glancing movement. It's a lot more of a dance-like choreography than it is a battle choreography, uh, which sometimes looks good, but sometimes it just yeah. it doesn't have quite the impact. So, right, and they look they look good. I'll say as far oh, as just fantastic. the visuals, yeah, they look good. Also in the sequels, what's the deal with and we'll we'll get we'll get through it with all this, but why can they not just deliver fatal blows? I mean, I know there's plot armor on everybody, but like <laughs> he cuts Finn's back and like we'll get to this the Ray and Kylo Ren, but it's like, oh she cuts his face. How do you not kill him? Like you, you hit his face. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what happened. I d I don't know if they felt the need to create more tension with injuries. Right, because previously you looked at what lightsabers do, especially in the prequel movies, they just immediately yeah. cut things off, right? Like, it doesn't take much. I mean, you look at the the droid battles, they just like flick those things and a droid gets cut in half, you know? I mean, yeah. it, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I, I do think they're just trying to create dramatic tension with with right. injuring people. And, you know, I, I guess there's not a whole lot of ways to injure people with a lightsaber without losing a limb, so they had to just gashes right like nix they had know. to completely eliminate losing limbs i mean Apparently, yeah george lucas loved taking a limb out and it's like <laughs> it we're not gonna lot, do it here <laughs> yeah so i don't yeah, know it's funny i don't know so we get to the ray one to me ray and kylo ren when you throw in the story aspect of it obviously i think the the playing field is leveled a lot ray's a force yeah. user we learn so that's like a big reveal there and then her fighting style caused so much speculation yeah. from 2015 to 2017 because she fights a lot like a Palpatine. She and she, I want to say she has like almost a, when she's on defense, it's similar to Obi-Wan as well. I want to say there may have been some comparisons there. Could be completely wrong, but she lunges like a Palpatine when she oh, fights. Oh yeah, that's the and first so, thing she does is lunges. Straight out. And with everyone's like, oh, she's going to be a Palpatine. And they say, oh, it wasn't planned, whatever. You cannot tell me that that was not in there Coincidence. for a specific reason. Yeah. So, and with this one, you get like that divide when, when the fight's over, like the ground splits and everything, kind of yeah. showing the separation between the two. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a fine scene. Um, I wish someone would have lost a limb, but that's just my preference. That's right where I had it. Um, I like, I like, I like the moment where, because I think there are things that are in line with Star Wars with that fight, right? You know, by, 
I think back to when Luke asks Yoda if, if the dark side's stronger and, you know, he tells him no, you know, that yeah. it's not stronger, just easier. And so I appreciate that Ray has that moment where she does what Maz says and she kind of stops and focuses and connects with this thing that she really doesn't quite understand yet. Right. And, and she's able to hold her own, right? I mean, obviously a large part of that we find out is this forced dyad that they throw in there. Mm. Um, in terms of how she's even able to fight without ever having wielded a lightsaber that before, but plot um, armor coming in. But I, I don't mind the idea that she's able to kind of find a moment of serenity and and fight within that. I think that's in line with what the Force is, and so yeah, um, I like it. It's it's a fun scene. Again, it's visually awesome, like fighting in those the snow the snowy wooded area. Yeah, um, with the the whole planet about to explode. I think mm-hmm. it does a good job of building that up and and bringing it to an end so I that's good be. i think b's a safe landing spot yeah. now for the last jedi this one is i have issues with it i think we're it's, gonna it's a, here we probably will <laughs> right, so first of all it's cool like watching yeah. it in theaters it's really cool like it thematically it's it's a large set it's like got the yin and yang of of ray and kylo ren they're both really good as yeah. far as all that goes. But like, if you watch the, the video breaking it down, it's like the guard, the, the choreography breakdown that the Praetorian guard is just doing completely stupid things. And so I don't know, that gives me an issue. Also, it's not lightsaber on lightsaber, but the ending of it where Ray like drops the saber, catches it, and spins and then throws it to Kylo Ren and he does the little, you know, ignition yeah. goes through the guy's head. That's awesome. I love that. that. Is a cool, that's a cool scene. It's, it's so cool. So I don't know. So where, I'm kind where of did you torn. Have this? I'm, I'm leaning towards a B. Okay. So we're not and that Because it's off. not, it's not like a lightsaber duel. It's two people with that's a lightsaber yeah, dueling. That's fair people without it so i don't know we omitted instances of that earlier that's true but this one's cooler than that that one so yeah i but why do you think it's an a i like it uh i if you watch this scene ray doesn't actually do this much in this scene for like the first three-fourths of it she just kind of fights one guy and struggles a little bit Meanwhile, yeah. you got Kylo over here, who's just like bodying three or four. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. He does like the guards. ram through on the one guy. I love it because it's just his brute force. Like he has, mm-hmm. it, I, I like the way he plays the character because there's just a very acute awareness of everything that's going on around him, which yeah. is very Jedi like, right? Um, the way he moves and dodges and attacks, like it's brute force, but it's a very aware and precise brute force. I, I actually really like Kylo Ren's fighting style. I think it's interesting. I do too. And, and so I like watching him come into these clashes and win just because he's stronger, right? Because mm-hmm. he has he knows what he's doing and he's just stronger. And so I love watching him just tear up those first few guards. Um, and then the end is pretty cool. Um, but I, I really enjoy watching him fight in that battle. I mean... I'm okay. So here's my thing. I get what you're saying, though. I get what you're saying. It's not a duel. Um, And and again, Ray doesn't matter in that scene for the first large chunk of it. Not until basically he kills everybody he can and he's gotten captured. Then we switch over to her and she kills one guy. (laughs) As far as a a fight goes, it's probably better than that first Qui-Gon Maul. It's better than the first Ray and Kylo Ren. Hmm. It's oh, yeah, better sure. than Mace Windu and Palpatine. Like it's probably action wise, it's probably better than Yoda and Count Dooku. Like I don't really have any reason to put it as a B versus an A, other than just preference. Like <laughs> so, again, though, that I feel like that's fair though. Like a large part of this, I feel like as we've talked about it, has been more than just choreography. So there are some I'm things gonna, that, that bother me. I couldn't tell you why though. I put it at like the top level of B almost go into A. B B and a half. <laughs> B B and three quarters. <laughs> B and three quarters. The thing is like when I look at it versus all of the A ones, I would put it below those. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying there. Because yeah. it's it's not those are true lightsaber duels. 
That that's fair. I totally get what you're saying. I would like to have a buffer between this one and Duel of the Fates and Battle of the right. Heroes. You can't start adding tears now. <laughs> no, the it has to have a layer in between that's, that's to cheating. keep it from being too close. <laughs> so yeah. Oh man. Awesome action scene, I'll say that. So we have two more. Uh both are Ray okay. versus Kylo Ren. That's right. The one in Kajimi is cool because it's in two different places. So she's on the ship and yep. he is on Kajimi and it goes back and forth. So like the filming is cool. It looks cool. I don't think the I don't think there's much to it as far as the fight goes. Like it's kind of slow. It's more about a yeah. dialogue than it is them fighting. Is. Yeah. And kind of realizing like, oh, they can fight each other when they're not in the same place. Yeah. So I think that's kind of an awesome concept. But the duel itself is not awesome. So I, I'm kind of torn on where to throw this one. I, I put it down at a C. Um, because, because you're right, it's, it's visually it's cool, right? The quick mm -hmm. flashes between their locations as they fight, but still being able to see both of them within those spaces. Yeah. Is, it, like, it's really visually very cool. Yeah. But it's also, it, this is me personally, right? I'm sure there are people out there who think it's amazing, and that's fine. But it, dis it it does more of a distraction from the duel. Like, it makes it harder yeah. for me to focus on how they're actually fighting and what they're doing. Um, which, that's probably intentional, right? I think the focus is supposed to be on the back and forth with the, the juxtaposition of where they are and how they're fighting. But as a duel, it just, it, it, it makes it hard to follow the combat. Like, it's very distracting to me. Now, that's yeah. a personal opinion. So as a duel, it's not not something where I look forward to the action side of it, but it's it's a cool sequence that looks really, right. really cool. So. They oh. also just kind of have to walk in a circle because they're yeah they're confined individually, kind of where they are. That's so they're true. not yeah. jumping up and around. I, that would have yeah. been kind of an interesting dynamic to see of what if one of them jumps, like how, how that works. But yeah, mm. I think C is okay. It's good. It's it's not terrible, but it's not it's average. So. One question with this one, where she knocks Vader's helmet off, you know, and then yeah. he's like, oh, that's yeah. where you are? In your head, do you like to think that he takes it with him, like, back up there? Or do you think he leaves it and then they end up blowing it up when Kajimi goes? Because, I mean, he's like a Vader fanboy. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's hard, because he... Uh, I bet he took another, it with him. Well, that's a whole another side story that we could talk about that is... <laughs> his character growth is completely undone at the start of this movie where he goes yeah. back to, he's put Vader behind him and now he's back to worship. I love Vader. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, uh, I like to think Bruh. that he's still the Kylo Ren we saw in last Jedi. Who's like, you know what? I don't need to be bound by the past. I kind of do my own thing. Cause that was a good character moment for him that they undid. Um, but at the same time, it was on a pedestal in his bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that doesn't quite line up. <laughs> Now, for this last one, um, this is the fight on the second Death Star wreckage. Now, we can get over the fact that it's not probable that all that wreckage actually landed there and, and stayed in that form. I get that. That's not realistic. Um, the fact that it's just a perfect amount above water for them to fight, also probably not realistic. The fact that there's a body of water big enough for a planet to land on a body of water in a moon. Again, doesn't make any sense. But oh, they took the Emperor's throne room, like with, in the whole, yeah. when they're explaining how they made it, they took it and they were like, okay, the impact of this had to make everything go down. So they like recreate the room and then make it to scale, but as if it's, you know, been damaged from, from what yeah. happened. I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. the fact that they try to play to the nostalgia fans because they largely made a lot of fans mad in the previous movie. But by doing this, it made this movie worse than the previous movie. But this scene in and of itself, them fighting, there's a, there's a fatal blow to it. You get Ray is defeated by Kylo Ren. Like he has not beat her yet. And he finally beats her here. And then Leia gets involved. And so yeah. you finally get him kind of having this moment of, of beating Ray and you've got the significance of Leia calling through the force and she dies during this duel. Yeah. 
this duel turns Kylo Ren back to the light side. Ray tells him like, Hey, in that last movie, I wanted to take your hand, but I, I didn't want Kylo Ren. Like I wanted it to be Ben Solo. And so he's kind of torn with that. Then Han Solo, like the thought of Han Solo shows up at the end. There's a lot going on here that makes this like just a really yeah. good scene as a whole. Even though I don't yeah. like this movie. It's my least favorite Star Wars movie. I like this scene. Sorry, coughing. Um, no, you're good. <laughs> yeah, no, I did I did mute myself, though. I figured out that made a whole lot more sense than just coughing in the air <laughs> over here. Um, I'm a little slow sometimes. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I feel like there's an intensity in this fight that's lacking in a lot of the other sequel battles. I feel like they kind of finally got parts of it right where it feels like two characters that are really trying to kill each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like it, it, I don't know what it is about it. I'm I'm sure maybe the choreographer could maybe explain something they did different, but it just feels (laughs) different to me in terms of its intensity. And so I like that. I feel like it, it looked better. Um, I, yeah, despite the fact that it's not super realistic, I love the setting. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it. There's some cool moments throughout it with uh, with the with the battle and stopping the lightsabers with the force, and we've kind of seen that since. Oh, um, yeah. With uh, Ahsoka, right? Ahsoka she, does it. Yeah, she did it with in, against in Balin. With Balin, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, we've seen that happen since. So that was uh, that's I, I like that. That's a cool idea, cool concept. So, yeah, um, it is. I, I like this battle. I think it's fun, and then it does it does lead directly into some of the better story and connective elements of of this movie um, of the entire trilogy yeah yeah so i i think story wise and then just kind of the the setting and the tension of it and the the better choreography in my mind i, I this is probably my favorite sequel battle i think it's an a yeah i'm okay with that it's one can, of the I better can, duels. I can separate and, it from the rest yeah, of the movie. That from I the movie. Like and say that yeah. that duel is good. <laughs> and also when they're filming it, I don't know if you saw like any, they did actually give some behind the scenes on this. The rest of the yeah. behind the scenes is like in Fort Knox for this movie. But this one, they actually do give it to you. And they made like a wave pool for this. So it's it's That's a cool. lot of blue, green screen, all that stuff but they've got practical sets. And when they're doing this, they are actually getting buffeted with this water. Like it's not just CGI water. They were actually getting soaked. (laughs) So when Kylo Ren's walking through the water there, you know, in that, that's pretty iconic. Like he comes out of that one, like ready to fight or spins a saber. He's genuinely soaked from real water. So I think they, of all they did wrong, they did this right. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate when they try to bring in as many practical elements as they can. I yeah. do think it really helps ground some of those scenes much, much better. Um, maybe that's why I like it. I don't know. And they put a, they stake their claim in this scene in the trailers too. They they kind of knew oh, yeah. it was going to be good. And don't they play a little bit of Duel of the Fates, Battle of the Heroes during this? Like, don't they kind of do a mashup of all of that? Yeah, I feel like there are some quick elements of kind of the the high points of those pieces that are kind of woven in here. I know it's Battle and then of the they Heroes. Also, I can't if Duel of the Fates comes in there. Um, they there are elements take of it in the, there. Yeah, and they take the music completely out at one point when they're fighting outside, and you just hear a lightsaber battle with waves crashing. That's pretty yeah. cool, too, because most cool. duels, you get yeah. a lot of you know music to it. So there we have it. We have two firmly in S, and then it's uh, two firmly in D, and then the rest are just kind of in there. So I think it's a fairly balanced list. I'm sure some could probably move up or down uh, within the A, B range, probably. I think C and D are pretty firmly where they're at. I think we're pretty solid on those. Yeah. Yeah. So comments, let us know what your tier rankings would be, where you agree, where you disagree, all that good stuff. But lastly, before we go, pretty excited to announce that our next episode is going to be our first mailbag. So 
we are going to ask the audience to submit some questions maybe that you have for us regarding Star Wars next week. So you can say like, Kevin, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? Stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, drop a comment on this video. Just put like mailbag for next week, write the question. We'll get it included. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, you can go check it out there. It's Padawan underscore pops. And you can just shoot me a DM. I'll put up something in my stories a couple times between now and then just to let us know what you would like us to answer. And we will feature your questions next week. So that should be a fun time. It could go a lot of different ways. It's going to be very unscripted. So I'm excited about that. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and we will catch you guys next time.